The consumer wants change. They want to know what's in their food, how it's growing, and where it comes from. We are going to show you a variety of stories. The story of one year growing at our hobby farm, and within this story, we will try to answer the following questions. Can we feed the world the way we farm today? A story on soil. What is happening to our bees? And last but not least, how can we get more people into farming? Can we feed the world under current agricultural practices? I mean, there's more than enough examples of how we're, you know, basically over-utilizing our soils and, you know, degrading our soils and water supplies um, and coastal wetlands. No. In the next 150 years, we have got to find a completely different way of feeding the human race. One of the goals we should all aim for is that every community becomes self-sufficient when it comes down to producing our food. Why ship produce all over the world when we can make it ourselves? That doesn't mean that we should not eat papaya or mango anymore or use olive oil. I'm talking about the basic needs that we can grow in our climate. I think we realized that, you know, we, were, we could work for five years and all that work could be undone by a government policy that changed or a new government that came into power. And, uh, and that was kind of felt like, wow, why, why are we doing this when we can actually be out there creating something, building a business, and uh, providing goods and services for people. This farm is financially viable and I, I really think that that's what young farmers and new farmers need to hear is that you can actually make a living as a farmer which is wonderful and I think that's part of the reason we wanted to leave mm. Victoria is we just wanted that freedom of having 10 acres and being able to decide what we wanted to do with it. We not only need a frank dialogue about agriculture but we need you to get involved.